Good morning, good evening, and good day. Thank you so much for watching Attack Power Gaming. Today, we're going to be talking about microwing our airplanes and their usage and effective ways to exercise your air power. So, let's uh, don't forget to like and subscribe the video if you're enjoying this content, and let's dive right in. So one early strategy you can use your air power for is to call in a heavier recon plane at the beginning of the game, in this case an IL-2KR, has some 23mm guns, it's relatively effective at shooting targets on the ground. Now it's not really designed to destroy things straight up, but what it can do is stop transports and things and kind of mess up the opponent's push so you can establish a really strong forward position. So this is a very common thing to do. Also the IL-2KR has a very good resilience, so it's very unlikely that it's going to die. So you can use this throughout the game and hopefully keep it alive to constantly harass your opponent. You can see here the moment I saw the opponent's recon plane that he has also called in, I immediately switched tactics and actually had my IL-2KR go after it. Now there's no chance I'm going to capture it, catch it to destroy it because the PE-2R has a 510mm uh, kilometer speed and the IL-2KR does not. Now that doesn't mean he'll never catch it. Since it's flying in circles and the IL-2KR is flying generally straight, we do have a chance of catching up to it, but it doesn't look like we will. And this was probably a poor choice on my part. Now I thought maybe it was a slower plane similar to mine. But it wasn't. It was faster, and at that point I had already lost the opportunity. If you are going to do this recon attack at the beginning of the game, you need to make sure to actually attack ground with your plane so that they will angle correctly coming down. If you just fly your plane over top and at the last second tell it to attack down, it's not going to succeed. It's going to actually miss. It's not going to be able to angle properly. So it's something to be very careful with your planes. Now, you notice my opponent made the right move here. So this is a, this is a big tip here for microing your air. The most vulnerable your opponent's planes are is when they're flying near your zone and they are turning away. At that moment, it is perfect to call in your own fighter to come in and immediately be behind the enemy plane. This is a major tactic and extremely important for you to remember to do if you're trying to win an air battle, especially if the opponent is being aggressive or stupid with their planes like I currently am here for content, you know. So he, as I turned this corner here, in order to make sure there's no way I could turn back around, he immediately called his fighter plane in, and he's going to have a very easy time getting on the back of this IL-2KR to destroy it, because I'm also very slow. If he head on this plane, which I suggest trying not to do in most situations, is to head on your planes, he would lose, actually. Even though he's a fighter plane, he would lose. My, my armament's actually quite heavy, uh, and my very good resilience absolutely outweighs his bad resilience plane here. The Yak-9 really does not have a strong loadout. This is actually a very weak loadout overall. It does not kill things very fast. The L2KR would actually pick it apart if it can get in behind it or straight on to it. So that's something you want to make sure you're being aware of. If not sending especially low resilience planes head oning other enemy planes, even if they're not fighters, because you could easily lose. So we can see here another good move by my opponent. He's bringing in his recon plane in front of his bomber so that he doesn't lose sight of his target. I called in my own fighter here. And this is not, I knew it was not going to shoot it down. I just wanted to scare off the recon. Now, he's bringing his Yak-9, which has a bad resilience, versus my LA-7, which has a medium resilience. And we can see the result right here when they head on. Okay, his plane is going to be more damaged than mine. Now, we didn't get much of a difference here. Try to get us back on target here. And very easily takes it down. You can see me microwing to try to get around here. This was bad on my part. So it, I did come out luckily here, but if I had actually head on this very good resilience plane, I probably would have gone down. Immediately brought it around, trying to get back on the back of this thing. He is microwing it to pull it around here to reduce the angle at which I get to shoot at him. Now he's calling in another Yak-9, I would assume. There it is. Okay, I'm still locked down. I really want to take out this IL-2 uh, this IL two here. And angle-wise, I'm pretty safe at the moment. I called in another LA-7. We have a pretty good air battle going here. And this is the problem letting the AI just do it all itself. It, this is going to take these large turn circles and stuff. You can see I did manage to catch that IL-2 out. My LA-7s are going to try to chase him down. There's no AA at the moment, so it's relatively safe. To, safe is the wrong word. Relatively safe to do this. I actually had them attack ground over here. There was a support weapon. But when you micromanage your planes, you can turn them much more quickly. And you're going to, like, click very rapidly in order to get them to do what you're 
asking them to do, you're going to click very rapidly to make them micro turn. So if I wanted to make this LA7 here turn really quickly, it's going to do it myself, but I would have to click, 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 click really fast to try to pull it around at the angle I want it to pull. So microing your planes is very possible, but it is quite challenging. You have to, you're going to have to be very much on that unit, focusing on it and clicking very quickly and being very active on choosing different angles that you can try to pull your plane in. Because otherwise, the, the AI is going to pick stupid angles. I can almost promise you that. So here we can see I called in a Yak-9B to take out this sniper. Now, this is not a great usage of my Yak-9B. We can see cost-wise here, I'm paying 100 points to try to take out a 20-point sniper team. Not the greatest use of a Yak-9, and this is this is an example of an aggressive use of your fighter bombers. You want to try to be picking more valuable targets, say something like this Zis-3 over here. That's at least 45 points, and, and is causing issues over there pushing. On the flip side, killing their recon definitely cuts down his eyes and stuff. Now, in response, he has called in two Yak-9s to try to make up for his lack of strength in this department because again these are very weak fighters i have my la7 over here let's see what happens i immediately micro my plane over to try to keep it from doing something dumb like pulling off to evac immediately so i actually have auto evac off so that's one thing you want to make sure you you check if you want to change that the auto winchester evacuation will automatically evac your planes after they drop their payload this is very good for new players if you're not good at microwing or you're you're not ready to control lots of things leave that auto evac on because otherwise your bomber's gonna get, die they're just gonna end up flying in circles and they're gonna get shot down but once you're getting more comfortable with it it is better to turn that off because what you can actually do if you wanted to you can queue up an evac order you can hold down shift and press v V is evac, by the way. You can hold down shift and press V so they'll evac immediately after they bomb anyway. Or you can give them an order to move in a direction and then evac. So if you know there's AA, say, up here at the north, and you don't want your Yak-9 flying up into the north to evac, you can click it to go down and then evac from there and it'll pull south instead. So you see by pulling my plane, you can see me clicking rapidly here to try to make sure I stay in an angle that he can't catch me. I was able to get my Yak-9B out. Now my LA-7, you can see me clicking really quick here to pull around to try to control this turn because you can see the LA-7 was about to turn in a stupid angle. I'm pulling around to make sure I stay at an angle that these guys can't get on my back. It's all about getting on the back of these planes. You can see how quickly I'm I'm clicking to try to control this turn. I'm going to pull into them. You want to come at them so they can't get behind you. And then I immediately evac. Once you see that smoke trail, you should get your planes out. That means they're almost dead. They're going down really soon. You do not want them sitting out with that going on. But that's how you micro your fighters. You want to keep them at angles that the opponent can't get behind and fire several shots at your plane. That's how they get shot down. So if you can manage to keep your planes coming at angles where the opponent can't get behind or can't put a lot of ammo into your planes that's how you do it that's how you get a really good trade-off in your fighters and that's how you micro those fighters in to win fighter battles you can see here again we have my la7 coming up against his two yak nines i really don't want this engagement I'm smoking and I immediately call him off at a spot that it can get an angle that these guys can't immediately pull on the back of him and he should be able to safely get out. So timing your evacs is also very important, especially when you're working with your fighters and stuff. A lot of times it's better not to immediately evac your planes because they will just turn and present their rear to the opponent's plane. So we can see here my LA-7 is getting on the back of this Yak-9. He has turned it so that I get less time to shoot him. He's already smoking. I'm going to pull my guy around here. I'm in neutral, so I'm going to change so we can see my micro. This straight on is very much in my favor because of my medium resiliency and his plane's almost dead. You can see me trying to pull this around manually. He's going to turn more efficiently because of that. And I'm going to be able to come in and do another head on with this yak and my AA help do a little bit of damage just enough so that my LA-7 could take it down effectively. So you can see these were really positive fighter engagements for me, trying to make use of my medium strength fighters. And like I've mentioned before, medium strength fighters are worlds better than bad resilience fighters. It, the difference is staggering. You want medium, medium resilience fighters whenever possible. I have my bomber coming in here. Now, I don't know what's in this forest. I know it's more than one infantry squad, so I'm going after 40 to 50 points of stuff. I immediately evac it because I really don't want this thing sitting around. And he's starting to finally bring in some AA. 
One big reminder, guys, in terms of if your opponent is bringing in a lot of air power, the answer is not to call in a billion fighters of your own. The truth is the, the response is calling in AA. That is the way to actually shut down your opponent's air power is anti-aircraft weapons, not fighters. Now, fighters, again, can shoot down your opponent's plane and then slowly chip away at their air power. But truthfully, if the opponent has really built up a huge air force, the answer is not going to be call in more of your own fighters to try to fight them in that fight. The truth is, the answer is most likely to call in more AA, secure yourself a good AA net, and go from there trying to shoot down some of their planes. So here's another example of this recon opening, and this really is only effective when your recon planes actually have some sort of armament, which in this case they do. They have 450 kilogram bombs. It's not a heavy payload, but it is plenty to harass, disrupt, and damage the opponent's troops. So he's going to come in here, and he's going to drop those bombs on these transports coming in, do a lot of damage to my initial momentum. Now, luckily, my troops are a little spread out. When you see this coming, you really should try to either immediately unload or spread, uh, try to get your troops out, like stop one, move another. And again, this is micro. You can see it, uh, it just didn't happen for me. He dropped those bombs. It was a very nice bombing strike. But here, he did not angle his plane correctly, so he missed. Now, here we can see the problem with head-onning, especially for this G2, which is a much lower quality plane than the RE2005 series here. 120 mil and some machine guns. This has 320 mils and two machine guns. Easily takes down. Now I'm smoking, so I'm actually going to swing this around. I, feel, I apparently f felt very confident that you can take out this recon still. Probably a little bold. The uh, maneuverability on this plane is very, very poor, though, so it shouldn't be hard for me to get on the back of that Falcon Wolf. And we, I got lucky, couldn't get an angle in time. And then immediately retreating. Don't hold your planes in longer than they need to. And this is a good time to bring up making sure to check your loadouts on your planes. All fighters can shoot down other planes, but if they only have a single 20 mil, that's a very weak loadout. It's the 20 mils that do damage, not the machine guns. Of course the machine guns do some damage, but that's not... They're not the damage dealers. They're not the things really doing the work. It's those 20 mils, 30 mils, 23 mils, whatever multi-millimeter auto cannon weapon they have. So we can see here, this is a good use of these ground attack planes. Now, there's not a lot of divisions don't have these, but these specific ground attack planes with the, they have this little symbol, this gray symbol here. Uh, heavily armored. Uh, we got 420 mils. It's a lot of damage. Machine guns don't do much for the ground targets, but it's these 420 mils that do this. They have very good resilience. They're very cheap. 65 points for a plane is dirt cheap. The thing with these is that they're actually extremely dangerous against other planes because of their very high resiliency and their huge loadout. They have terrible uh, maneuverability, which is why they're not for shooting down planes. But if they can get on a plane, they will kill a plane. And we'll see here in a little bit, I committed one of the greatest airplane sins and flew straight into some of, the, of one of these guys with two fighters. Oh, oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. We'll, we'll see it here soon. One other thing you have to be aware of is that there are different levels in the plane. So this plane is at a very high altitude right now, so it actually needs to fly downwards. Flip side, this one is actually kind of underneath the plane, so it has to fly up. So you can actually see the angle of the plane that it's at. So you have to be very careful. Sometimes the planes can actually end up way up in the air, and it, it does matter. You can't immediately just get behind something if you're way up in the air weirdly. And you can see me microing here to try to get out from this G2. Just again, because my fighter, just because my fighter's better doesn't mean it can't be shot down by these planes. But knowing the speed differences is important, because I know if I just straight up evac, he will not catch me with his planes, because their speed is almost equal. So being aware of the speed of different planes is really important. So here, this, this, this is it. This, this is the, this is the worst thing I've ever done in, with an airplane. I took these two fighters and I said, all right, I'm going to shoot this thing down. I'm so tired of these, and they're not even that big of a deal. I mean, they're certainly annoying if you leave them alone, but... I'm going to fly these two things straight into this, and it's just, it's so bad. There goes one, and there goes two, and his guy is smoking. That That is 240 points down the drain to kill a 65-point ground attack plane that wasn't even doing much. Do not head on planes.
It's it's something you want to avoid unless you have a medium fighter and they have a bad fighter and they have one, it's one on one and you know that's the only thing you're gonna fight. Then sure, go for it. But I strongly suggest you avoid head-ons whenever possible. You can see what happens. It's just a disaster. It's a disaster waiting to happen. Do not head on your planes. Bad things will occur. So I hope everyone enjoyed this content here today with our airplane tutorial and how to get good with your airplanes in Steel Division 2. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel for more Steel Division 2, Warno, and other strategy game content. Have a fantastic day.